episode, Abdul Latif Kadir Idris is presenting an article co authored with Dirk Hanschel, Mario G. Aguilera Bravo, and Bayard Dashpurov entitled Environmental Rights Between Constitutional Law and Local Context Reflections on a Moving Target. It appeared in the special issue, Breaching the Boundaries of Law and Anthropology, New Pathways for Legal Research, in September 2022. In a nutshell, what is your article about? In a nutshell, our article is about investigating the effectiveness of environmental rights conceived whether as fundamental human rights or rights of nature in specific cultural contexts. We use a combination of both law and anthropology to empirically investigate case studies in uh, Ethiopia, Mongolia, and Ecuador. We found out in general that environmental rights are a moving target, meaning that they are context specific and there is a lot to learn by employing anthropological methods. Specifically, in Ethiopia, for example, we found out that the absence of rule of law is a huge hindrance on the effectiveness and implementation of uh, environmental rights. In Mongolia, the mismatch between local conceptions of environmental justice, such as custodian-based ideals, mean that communities are not frequently basing their claims on environmental rights that are recognized in the constitution. In Ecuador, the move to recognize the rights of nature in the constitution is obviously significant, but this move from local practice to state law has not been smooth, which means that it has created a lot of uh, ambiguities, overlaps, and redundancies. What's at stake and why now? Now is a very interesting time to investigate this question, I think uh, at least for two reasons. The first one being most constitutions adopted environmental rights as a fundamental rights starting in the 90s in the 2000s. And then given the time lapse between now and then, I think it's a good time to investigate and see how they have been useful or otherwise uh, now. Uh, secondly, at the international level, the major, there is a major development. Uh, the in General Assembly voted to recognize the right to clean and healthy environment as a unique new right uh, under international law. Uh, so I think this is also a good time to step and reflect on uh, the usefulness and utility of uh, these rights before adopting new rights as such. Where do we go from here? At least for us, the authors, uh, what we have presented in this article is a preliminary finding from these uh, uh, empirical investigations. Uh, we have yet a lot of data to analyze and hope to find more uh, context-based factors that promote or hinder the effectiveness and usefulness of uh, environmental rights. Uh, and also, uh, I think for academics uh, elsewhere, if the article would inspire further investigations uh, along this line, uh, and also methodologically, that would be a good achievement. About you. Who inspires you? My daughter, I have to say, uh, inspires, me, inspires me the most. Uh, I have a three-year-old daughter, and given the subject of our study nowadays uh, is environmental issues, uh, which has a lot to do with intergenerational justice and the future of the next generation. I would say she inspires me the most uh, 